Hey guys, and welcome back to another great episode of Damos in the Class. Today, we're going to start talking about fractions. Why? Because nobody never really liked fractions. I'm not going to say I ain't really liked them, but I will say if you're not taught, it will be confusing. And that's just the thing, how we were taught. If we didn't get it, if you don't understand anything, who likes it, right? So, I'm going to try my best to make this more comprehensible for you guys to understand. And this way, you can love fractions too. Today's aim is adding of fractions. We have our numerator, which is on top, and our denominator, which is on bottom. As you see in our example for two-fifths. The top number is our numerator, and the bottom one is what we call our denominator. So, units of fraction. A fraction whose number is 1. That's exactly what that means. So, it represents one shaded part of the whole. The term unit means 1. And as you see for our example, we have two parts. One part here and one part there. And then we also have one part shaded and one part not. So, our shaded part is our numerator, which is our top number. And that is one piece of that is shaded. And we have the bottom denominator is where our total parts are. So we have a total of one, two parts. So this is how we get a two for our denominator. All right, so for today's first example, practice problem, we have 3 twelfths and 4 twelfths. Now, the first issue I have with starting the problem is the fact that it is written horizontal. Horizontal means going in this direction. For fractions, I feel, and this is just my opinion, that it's best if we were to write it vertical, which would be straight down. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. And not only should we write it vertical, but anytime we're doing any type of math, we always want to put the larger number on top. So between the two, we both have the denominator of 12. Now, because our denominators are the same, we can add. That's the first thing we know. Second thing is we want to determine which number is bigger. Is it three or is it four, Jared? Jamir, excuse me. Jared is my oldest son. Jamir? It's four. All right. Great job. So four is bigger than three. So that's exactly how we're going to write that vertically. So we're going to write four over 12. And then we're going to put three over 12. Then we're going to put our plus sign. And then we're going to write our equal right up underneath our 12. All right. So for me, this makes this a lot more comfortable, not only for this problem, but for future problems to come. So like we said, our 12s are our denominators and they both the same. So we already know that our answer is going to have a denominator of 12. So we're going to go ahead and write our denominator of 12 underneath our equal line. So now that we have our denominator set and written, we're going to go in and look at our numerators, which are our top numbers, which represent the shaded parts of our fraction. So I like to circle those numerators. Why? Because it makes it visual on what I need to add. Now I can go ahead and write this as equation 4 plus 3. So that's what I'm going to write. 4 plus 3 equals 5, 6, 7. Exactly. 7. So, our answer on top is 7, and that makes our fraction now 7 twelfths. All 
All right, so our problem number two, we have one-fourth and three-fourths. And again, most of your tests that you see will be written like this. And I just feel that on your scrap paper, that is definitely okay for you to rearrange it for you to get the best outcome. And in my opinion, writing it vertically would be the best way to do that. So, again, we're going to decide. We already see that our denominators are the same. Once they are the same, then we can go ahead and add. Before we add, we look at our numerators and we decide, is one bigger than three? No. Right. So three is our bigger number. So when we write our fraction, we're going to write vertically three-fourths first. So we're going to have three-fourths. Then we're going to write one-fourth plus an our equal sign underneath the four. All right, so like we said, our denominators are the same. They are four, so we know our answer is going to have a denominator of four. So we're just going to go ahead and write that. And like last time, and every time, hopefully now, this becomes your new way of solving, then you would go and circle your numerators. Why? Because then you know exactly what to put into your sentence to make your equation. And I have 3 plus 1. So that's what I'm going to write. 3 plus 1 equals 4. Great job. 4. So now we're going to put that 4 on top of our fraction, which makes it 4 over 4. So 4 over 4, we can't leave it like that. Why? Because this means we have the same amount of parts shaded as the same amount of total, which then changed into a total of one. So that means the same amount, if we have any fraction that has the same amount as the numerator and the denominator, whatever that number may be, whether it's four over four, two over two, six over six, it still all becomes one whole part. Because now all of the parts, which were four parts, are all shaded in. So now that means that piece becomes a whole. And better I can show you is I'm going to draw a box. I'm going to split it into four. And I have my four pieces. One, two, three, four. Now... That's the total. That represents our denominator. So, to represent our numerator, that means the shaded. So, this is shaded, this is shaded, this is shaded, and this is shaded. So, now that they're all shaded in, that makes it a whole and not a fraction. So, it becomes a whole number one. All right, so for our third practice problem, we have 5 eighths plus 1 eighth. So we're going to do it exactly the same way. We're going to look and see that we have eighths for both our denominators, which means we are clear to go ahead and add. We're going to look to see at our numerators, is 5 bigger than 1? Yes. All right, so 5 is going to be the first, 5 eighths is going to be the first fraction that we're going to write vertically. So, we're going to write 5 over 8, then 1 over 8, our equal line, and our addition symbol. And just like we said, both of them are 8s, so we're going to set our denominator for 8. We're going to then go in and circle our numerators so we can see our number sentence. And we see we have 5 plus 1 equals 6. Exactly. Good job. So we're going to put that 6 right there on top of the 8, 
which gives us 6 over 8. Now, another thing that I've noticed, especially this year, with even Jamir in class, the teacher was not teaching them that they always, and this is a rule of math, not my rule, math's rule, that you can't leave a, a fraction until it's at its simplest form. That means as small as you can write it. Which means we have to then find the fraction that is equivalent to 6 eighths, but showing it in the smallest way. And yes, that definitely sounds confusing. When I was in third and fourth grade, it was confusing for me too. However, I will tell you, the easiest way to always get these right is learning your math facts. You must learn your multiples, which is your timetables. Once you can go all your twos, all your threes, all the way to at least 10 in your head, that's going to make everything much easier. So I'm going to advise you to practice your number charts and practicing your multiplication. So this way it'll make these steps easier. Because as we know, multiplication, division is the opposite. So in fractions, that's exactly what we're looking at. This technically means six, and that's a division sign, and that's an eight. So in order to get it down to the simplest form, we need to figure out how can we divide our 6 and our 8 with the same number to break down this fraction? So, again, knowing your number facts helps. But I'm going to show you what I mean exactly. So now, if you think and you have 6, how can we make 6 using multiplication? We can do 2 times 3 and that will give us 6. Okay? And how can we get 8? So, well, let me write it all. Since I wrote that, I don't want to mess you up. We can also do 1 times 6. Those are the two ways that you can get 6. Now, for 8, we're going to do the same thing. We can do 1 times 8. And that will get us 8. We could do 2 times 4, and that would get us 8. So those are the two ways that we can get 8. So now with that being said, if you look at both of these, they share a number in common. And what number do you see that they share in common? They both share a 2. So the 2 times 3 gave us 6, and the 2 times 4 gave us 8. That's the same common factor that both 6 and 8 share. So we're going to take that 2 and we're going to divide by 2 over 2, which means we're dividing 6 by 2 and we're dividing 8 by 2. Because whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So it's 2 over 2. So now, again, if you know your number facts, this makes this easier. But I've already put it up here for you. 2 times 3 equals 6. And like I said, multiplication is the opposite is division, which we're, we're doing now. So if the opposite is division, if 6, excuse me, if 2 times 3 equals 6, then 6 divided by 2 equals Good job. So that's what you write. You put a 3. And you put your line for the fraction. Then we do the same thing to the bottom. Like we see up here. 2 times 4 equals 8. We're doing the opposite in division. 8 divided by 2 is going to give us 4. Great job. So that is what our new fraction should say, three-fourths. So now you know that six-eighths is equivalent or equal to three-fourths.
All right, guys. So now we're going to try a, a word problem. And so for me, I wanted to solve this as normal because I really want you guys to know that you can do it and it's nothing to it. Right. And so to help you make sure you're confident and get this done, we're going to do it this way, the way that I just showed you. And then I'm also going to show you. Well, I'm also going to leave down in the description a PDF downloadable for you to use fraction strips and that'll be able to help you. So it'll look like this when you open it up and this way you'll have the option to be able to cut them and use them um, in your hand as manila tips because for me hands on definitely serves better versus looking through the screen but it's to each his own because um, I definitely have a version for you to be able to look on screen too. But these is a, more of a hard copy. Like I say, you can cut those out and be able to measure the um, fraction so you can see for yourself how to make it reach the hole or whatever the problem is asking you. All right, so Lisa had five tenths cup of, sh of flour in the mixing bowl. She added two tenth cups of cocoa powder and three tenths cup of sugar. What is the total amount of dry ingredients in the mixing bowl? So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our fractions. And we see we have 5 tenths, 2 tenths, and 3 tenths. Now, we see all of them have the same denominator of what? Tenths. Exactly. So, we already know that we can add, because we have to add, that's what it means when it says, what is the total? When we have to find the total, that means add. That's your key word. So we're going to add all of these together. So now we know that they all have the same denominator. We can add. We're going to write them vertically, starting with the largest number first. So our biggest number out of our numerators is what number? Five tenths. Exactly. So we're going to write 5 tenths first. Then we have 3 and 2. Which one is bigger? 3. Exactly. Then we're going to write 3 tenths. Then we're going to write 2 tenths. Then we're going to put our line underneath that last tenth. And our plus out on the outside because we are adding. So like we already know and we can see we have tens as our denominator so our denominator is going to be what the ten. exactly so we know our denominator it has a 10 so just like we've already been taught we're going to circle our numerators this time we just have three of them so we circle all three and that's going to be our number sentence so we're going to write five plus three, plus two. So, if we're at five, we're gonna add three. What we got? Six, seven, eight. All right, and if we're at eight, we're gonna add two more? Nine, ten. There we go, ten. So now we have a ten here, we're gonna put that ten over top of this ten. So guys, I know you could be able to drop me a comment and let me know, what do we do now? We got the same number, shaded parts as our total. Does anybody remember what, that, what does that mean? Same number, same numerator, same denominator. So what does that equal? One. Exactly. Great job, guys. I know you all got it. We have 10 total parts. We have 10 shaded parts, and it equals a whole one. So guess what? That means we have one full cup of dry ingredients in the mixing bowl. That is the answer. All right, guys, so for our last practice problem, we have Jamir and Jalir were painting a banner for the cultural arts night at their school. Jamir painted five twelfths of the banner black and Jalia painted three twelfths of the banner white. The rest of the banner was red. What fraction of the banner is red? So guys, 
this is going to be a two-step. So how do we know? Because they're already asking us to find a portion of the banner that doesn't have a part of the fraction told to you. So already, you should be able to recognize that then you're going to have to subtract. But the once you have to first, you have to add. So once you add, then you would have to subtract from a whole, which I will show you step by step how that go. But I do want to prepare you that this is not a straightforward addition fraction. But I know you guys, you can do it, so let's get going. All right, so the first thing we do is that we're going to see that Jamir painted 5 twelfths, Jalia did 3 twelfths. So we need to know together what that was. So that means we're going to add. So just like the fractions we've been doing before, we're going to write them vertically. And we already see that they both have 12, so we know that we can go ahead and add. So, looking at our numerators, we have a 5 and a 3. Which one is bigger? 5. So, we're going to write our 5 twelfths first. Then, we're going to write our 3 twelfths right underneath. Then, we're going to draw our equal line and put our addition sign out on the side. Now, like we said, we have two twelfths. So, we already know that our denominator is going to be What's our denominator, John Man? 12. All right. So 12 is going to be our denominator and our answer, so we just go ahead and write that first. Then we circle our numerators, and we write our equation, which is 5 plus 3. 6, 7, 8. All right. So we get a total of 8. So we put that 8 on top of our 12. That gives us now... 8 twelfths. Alright guys, so like we already discussed, that we need to then find out what is left. Because together, Jamir and Jalia, they painted 8 twelfths of the banner. So, to find out what is left, the red part portion, as they said, that was all red. To find that out, we need to, we need to just, now we need to figure out what is the difference of our banner. 8 twelfths represents the black and the white, and we need to find out what fraction represents the red. So in order to do that, how do we make this fraction, we would have to have the rest of it, which means the whole fraction. So, like we said before, guys, the same number on top and bottom makes it a whole. So, if we have 12 over 12, that would be the whole banner. So, that's what we're going to write. 12 over 12. That would be the 12 parts of the banner, including Jamir and Jalia's portion, and everyone's portion, and the red. And this top here is the same thing. So now, because we don't know the other fraction that's missing, we again, like I said, we need to subtract. So we're going to take our 8 twelfths and write that right up underneath the 12 twelfths. Then we're going to draw our equal sign, and this time we're going to write a subtraction. And the same thing, guys, just like in addition, as long as our denominators are both set at the same number, they both are 12s, then we can go ahead and subtract. So we're just going to go ahead and write our denominator down here for 12, because we know that our answer is going to have a denominator of 12. So we just went ahead and wrote that in. And just like the addition, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to circle our numerator. So now we have a number sentence that says 12 take away 8. So at this moment, we're at 8. We're going to just count up to 12. 9, 10, 11, 12. All right. And that's going to leave us at 4. 
So we're gonna take that four and we're gonna put it right over top of our fraction. Now our numerator is four, our denominator is 12. But like I told you, you always, always, always have to bring a fraction down to its simplest form. And again, guys, this goes back to if you know your multiplication. So I know mine, so I'm going to share with you. Now, in order to make four, we could do that two ways. We could do one times four will give us four. And we could do 2 times 2, and that'll give us 4. So we're going to do the same thing with 12. We're going to see how can we make 12. We could do 1 times 12. That'll give us 12. We could do 2 times 6. That'll get us 12. We could do 3 times 4, and that'll get us 12 also. And those are the three ways that we can get 12. So, just like we did the last time, we want to look and we want to see. When we look at the 4, we see they got 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. Okay? Now we got, we look at the 12, we got 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. What do they both have the same? They both have 2 times something. You see that? So that's what we're going to use because they both have two. So we're going to go ahead and like we said, multiplication, the opposite is division. So we're going to divide by that same two from the four and that two from our 12. So four divided by two is two. All right. And... 12 divided by 2 is? 6. Great job. And guess what, guys? I'm going to need a little bit more room to show you. All right, guys? So we got an answer of 2 over 6. But if anybody's paying attention, I'm thinking you can see. Can't we get two groups out of 6? We can, right? So therefore, it's not in its simplest form yet. So I'm gonna come over here where I got a little bit more room, guys. And so I'm just gonna rewrite the four 12s. And then we divide it by two over two. And that gave us two over six. And that's where we at now. But we can't stop there, that's not the simplest. So how do we know it's not the simplest? We got one times two will give us two. How do we get six? One times six will give us six, and two times three will give us six. So what do they both share? They share two. All right, so since they share that two, we can go ahead and divide again by two. And whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So two, you can get how many groups of two out of two? You only get one group. And 6 divided by 3 is the same as 2 times 3 is 6. So 6 divided by 2 is what? 3. There we go. So the answer is 1 third. So how much is red? What fraction of the banner is red? 1 third. So that is the answer. 1 third, but this is actually the entire answer. You would have to have... 4 twelfths equals 2 sixths, then equals 1 third, because all three of these are equivalent, which means they all equal the same thing. However, we have to write it in our simplest form, which would be the 1 third. I don't want to add anything else to it because I want you to see each step that we did to get to it. And again, every time I leave the screen, it's to give you guys a chance to hopefully you could write down some stuff to help you through.
So guys, so this comes to the conclusion of my video today. I hope you enjoyed it. And please, please, please never forget, it's not about what you don't know. It's about what you're willing to learn. See you next time.